uh, I'm gonna like say it's like say this slowly. Your athletes are here to move, not to hear you talk. Mm. Now, if they move and then you stop them and you say something to them, then they will listen. It's not the other way around. So what we should do is we should be taught, it should be, you should earn the right to talk. We are here because we know the outcomes in our lives are within our control. That taking absolute ownership of how we eat, sleep, train, think, and connect with each other is how we'll optimize our health and happiness. That chasing excellence is how we grab hold of what is possible. Our mission is to live on the run, always chasing, never stop. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Chasing Excellence. How are you, Ben? Good, Patrick. Today we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take something out of real life here. We um, you recently had the opportunity to chat with an affiliate owner, and in your conversations, um, a part of those conversations were were giving some advice on how to maybe think about um, what the difference is between a, a well-run class and a class that had um, some room for improvement. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, coming off of that conversation, you had a chance to to maybe think about. Um, some, think, think about some of the things that you've you've done here at CFNE. Partly, I would guess, partly out of instinct and experience, and partly out of um, recognizing there's a need for me to say this is how we do the, this kind of thing. Um, and so, what you were able to do out of all that is come up with a list of um, maybe like a, or come up with like a scorecard is one yep. way to think about it. A scorecard of um, ten things that uh, you can you can um, measure your class against to see where how is it. Generally, and where can I make some room? Where where can I make some improvements? Cool. So I've got that the the list of ten, and we're just going to run through them. First one is room setup. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, before we just dive right into, let me just um, sure. so like I love the idea of that. This is like essentially it is a scorecard. Yeah. And it is for uh, maybe that's a little more. Con- it's for um, coaches or coaches coaching coaches to use as a as a as a metric for how you are running a class. So this is not coaching. Mm-hmm. So this is not your ability to see and correct. This is not your ability to manage groups. It's not your ability to demo or talk about strategy or any of those type of things. This is literally just like um, if you were to go into a kindergarten class, like without a lesson plan, this is what you would do best in that kindergarten class to make sure all the kids were behaving well and going through the school day the way that they're supposed to be going yep. as optimally as possible. This is the same way framework for this is like getting your athletes to go through the class and have an optimal experience Mm -hmm. minus so like literally like you could take like anybody with no coaching experience if they all got like if you scored yourself one to ten each of these categories and they all scored favorably inches it would be a good class Mm -hmm. now they might not come out better athletes but they would all feel like it was a really well-run class and that's the idea behind these got it so the first one is give it what was it uh room setup Okay, so room set. The idea behind this is like, you know, I, I get made fun of by my staff next door at, at CFNE because I use so many cones. <laughs> I use, I like cones everywhere. But the idea behind this is when I talk about room setup, it's first of all, the room should be set up before the athletes walk in. So if you're using boxes in that day, don't have the athletes bring the boxes out and set up the box. The boxes are already set up in a line and they're set up on a seam on the line. So the boxes are all perfectly lined up. People are watching this on they're probably seeing like the, the bookshelf all organized. <laughs> uh, but literally like we want to set up like if we're to, if, an, if an affiliate was to host a competition, they put, they put a lot of effort and most people do a lot yep. of effort in the way the room is set up. Well, why is that? Any thoughts? Uh, par- I think partially it's the psychology of it walking into a place that's that's clean and organized and it, it, it reduces the, the confusion of what's about to happen. Perfect. Yeah. On top of that, you also have like you're determining the spacing, yeah. you're determining the flow, which I imagine you're, also saves time of the it's, yeah. it's, <laughs> exactly. So all the things, right? Yeah. It creates it's it's all it overflows to so many other principles, yeah. right? But what we want to do is make sure that the boxes are set up. If there's a running route, we we tape the floor a lot of times, like every and we pull up the tape at the end of the night if we want to do certain things. But the idea is like set up the room, set up the running route. Here's another small one: is like if you're going to have. Um, athletes run into the gym you can't like 
They need to run back to their spot in the gym. Well, some people might be running to the back of the gym. Some people might be running to the front of the gym. Like, okay, so to alleviate that, you put a cone at the back of the gym that everyone has to run around. Yeah. And now everyone's running the same distance. Yeah, so what like, they do at the games, basically. Exactly. Yeah. So like you got to make, you're in charge of making sure that the flow the spacing and the safety, that the whole thing is working the way it's supposed to. And too much attention is better than too little. What you don't want to do is be like, all right, everyone grab a barbell, grab a box and I'm at, find some space on the that floor. That is the vast to, majority of my experience within and that's gyms, that's that? That's like, I'm just gonna, that's wrong. Yeah. It's, it's wrong. Like go, it's like you need to have the place set up like you would for a competition. Mm. And now people don't do that because it takes effort. Yeah, yeah. guess what? It takes effort. Um, just a kind of a mechanics question. Is the individual who's opening the gym, the coach at 5 or 5.30, whatever, are they responsible for that? Then that bleeds into the rest of the day? Or is the individual or individuals at the the evening prior so responsible what we do is, so that when everybody walks in, the, literally the first time? In the yeah, day? we do it. Uh, that's just like you choose. Like right. your gym, you choose. We do it the person in the morning. Um, usually, sometimes the late person will help out somehow. Maybe we're doing rowing and they pull out the rowers, right? Yeah. But we have the rowers set up. So every single time that we're doing rowing, the athletes walk in and we have 18 rowers. We have the 18 rowers set up where the 18 rowers are supposed to be. Now, if we're also doing a barbell workout, they grab their barbells and they place it behind or in line with each rower. Now we have like this perfect flow. So the workout's gonna be row, um, thruster, pull up. Now we are saying like you row here, you thruster here, you pull up here, and we're gonna rotate through in that order. Not like haphazardly and some rowers are facing different directions. And if someone's to walk in the gym, and they walk in, they, they should go a like little bit of like, maybe subconsciously like, wow, mm-hmm. like cool, this looks good. Yeah. And I, and I do think that it helps with the, um, I don't think people like, most people don't like to not know what's happening. And doing this, walking in into a situation where it's clear what's happening, it, it just, it actually reduces stress. Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Second one, minimize transitions. Okay. This, ha- this is a good follow-up from the last one or segue. Um, if we weren't to do that, and you were to do a um, the the general warm up, and maybe it's like line drills with running or something like that, and then you were um, asking athletes to go um, grab a so here's maybe here's a better example. Yesterday we did a workout. We did it outside because we're doing some work in the gym. Yep. So we did a workout outside that was running in dumbbells. Well, they're heavy dumbbells. They're seventy pound dumbbell snatches yep. for the guys, fifty for the girls. You can't just grab that and warm up with that. So you have to grab a light dumbbell to warm up. So instead of having the athletes walk into the gym and switch out their kettlebells for a, grab a light one, walk back out, do the warm up, then walk back in, grab a medium one, walk back out. What we did was we brought all of the dumbbells outside right next to where they were doing the workout. So we're minimizing the time that they're essentially not in class. Yep. Like they're doing something else. Yeah. They're kind of moseying back and forth. Same thing with like working with people outside and inside or let's put boxes away, now bring them back out or like just this idea of like this transition time of like it has to be it's consistent. Kind of dead time. You're trying to, yeah. So same thing with like, all right, athletes, come over to the whiteboard. Look at the workout. Okay, now athletes, Go in two lines. We're gonna go to um, do some warm up drills. Okay, now go grab barbells. Like, guess what? You could have done is like athletes grab barbells. Now with their barbells in place, you explain the workout and everything else that you need to do, and you do the active warm up there. It's one time shot, mm. not three different moves to get to where you want to be eventually. Anyway. Yeah. Next one: clock management. Okay, so when you hear this the first time, you think of it like, okay, so I'm gonna spend this much time on my warm up. I'm gonna spend this much time on the specific uh, um, strategy pieces. I'm gonna this much on the movements, this much. That's not what I mean. It's so much simpler than that, but mm-hmm. so overlooked. It's literally you are emceeing the class and letting people know how much, you're letting people know what's on the clock. So the, when this is done poorly and been gyms like this, it's um, people are kind of chatting around. They're sitting on the rowers waiting for the workout to go. And all of a sudden, beep, and the workout started. You're mm-hmm. like, what the hell? Are we going? <laughs> right. As opposed to, okay, three minutes to use the restroom. When you come back, let's jump on a rower. They jump on the rower. They go, we're starting in 30 seconds. Okay. Before we do that, let's high five the people on either side of you. Make sure we pace the first round. 10 seconds. Mm-hmm. Athlete set. Three, two, 
one, go. They start going, you're like, AMRAP 12, let's get through this. We have 12 more minutes of work. Then you start coaching people walking around and then at halfway point you go halfway and three minutes left you go three minutes and then at the last minute you start counting it down you yeah. let people literally know where they are in the workout and the end is 10 literally the music can start to come down 10 seconds left as opposed to sitting on a rower and beep and the workout started go yeah. and yeah. then the workout ends and it just time. ends yeah. like the music doesn't change no one yells or someone might yell time mm-hmm. When we're doing a Tabata, we're constantly yelling out, yeah. three, two, one, go. And then going to 10 seconds left, three, two, one, time. And your athletes will work harder. I promise you, intensity is a shortcut. It's the independent variable most commonly associated with favorable adaptations. Intensity, how hard your athletes work, is the shortcut to getting results. You can make them work harder by doing that. Mm. I promise. It's, uh, it sounds a little bit like you are suggesting people do like are like play by play announcers. In so the, middle of the class. way I learned this, the way I literally, the way I figured this out was, I used to MC the events that mm. we were doing. Yeah. And I tried I to remember. you try to create the race. So when you're trying to create the race, what do you do? You go like, bring your attention to lane four and lane five. Those are the two athletes, Bill in the blue shorts and Jim in the white shirt. They're going head to head. Guess what? None of that brings the same excitement as 30 seconds left, Mm -hmm. 20 seconds left. Like that's actually builds more excitement than anything else you can do. Next one I like, uh, coach more and talk less. So this is a problem when people um, care and Mm -hmm. people are know and they know stuff Mm -hmm. is you come back from your level one seminar and you're like, we're going (laughs) to, talk about this and this, and we're going to talk about this and this and this. And what you should do is actually have somebody time you or, or videotape yourself and time. How long are you actually talking to people when they're not moving? And it should not be more than when they are moving. But what happens Mm -hmm. is people get up there and they go, okay, we're going to do the snatch today. The snatch is one of the most complex movements that we have in CrossFit, but it's nothing more than jumping and bringing a bar from the ground to the overhead in a one fluid movement. We're gonna do the Bergner warmup to get loose for this thing. The Bergner warmup is three reps at each spot. The first one is the down and up, then the down shrug, and you get the idea, right? Mm -hmm. And you've been talking for three and a half minutes. And then you do the Bergner warmup, and it takes 25 seconds. Right. You, then you go, okay, now what we're going to do is work from three positions. The three positions are the high hang, the hang, and from off the ground. These three positions are important because, and now you've talked again for five minutes, and you do three positions, and it lasts 40 seconds. Right. Uh, I'm going to like, say it's like, say this slowly. Your athletes are here to move, not to hear you talk. Mm. Now, if they move and then you stop them and you say something to them, then they will listen. It's not the other way around. So what we should do is we should be taught, it should be, you should earn the right to talk. Mm. So what I do with this is like, if I'm gonna do an active warm up, let's say we do some Spider-Mans and some um, Samson stretch and some sumo squats and some child's pose, and then I'm gonna talk to them about the workout, what I'll do before that is I might have them do five burpees. Okay, now do five burpees. And they go to five burpees. And now mm. they're ready to like breathing mm-hmm. heavy. Now they'll listen, listen to me for 30 seconds. That's interesting. As yep. opposed to like, okay, we got done with child's pose. Now stand up and listen to me for 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. Dude, I'm here to move. Like I'm here to work out, not listen to your voice. Number five, warm up like you do. Okay, so this is, this is a, a, one of the big faults I think a lot of gyms do is like, we're going to do um, Grace. Okay, we're gonna do grace, which is 30 clean and jerks for time. Okay, everyone grab a rower, an ab mat, and a kettlebell. And what we're gonna do is a really easy um, Tabata of these things. We're gonna hold a plank in between. Like, dude, if you were to go good grace on your own, you Mm. would not do that. It's just, you're trying to fill time. Mm. And it's not general, it's not specific, it's not gonna help. And what you're doing is you're violating a few things we already talked about, which is like eliminating the consistency. And now you have to teach these other movements that have nothing to do with what you're going to be doing. 
If you were to go do grace on your own, what you would do is you would come in the floor and you'd start to get loose. You'd go through some range of motion stuff. Maybe you'd stretch your shoulders a little bit. You'd try to work yourself, you know, um, your hamstrings and your hips a little bit. And then you'd do some like Spider-Man things. You get like generally warm, like mm -hmm. generally warm. Yep. Then you would grab an empty barbell and you start working. Maybe you go through some sort of like barbell warm up, like good mornings and back squats and strict presses and um, elbow rotations and some RDLs. Then from there, right away, what you'd start doing is empty barbell hang power cleans. Yep. Then you do a couple maybe like strict presses or push presses. Then you bring it down to the hang and then you, then you start warming up with some weight. That's how we should be warming up our class. Not, okay, we're gonna warm up with some kettlebell swings and grab a med ball and do some ab mat sit-ups. That is a distraction. It's not helping you. It also is taking away from your opportunity to teach yeah. the movement which you're going to do in a specific form. So what classes will do is they'll do that other warm up with med balls and GHDs and ro whatever, or rowers, whatever it is. And then they're rushed and they don't have time to coach the movement when they could have been doing that right through the specific warm up and getting really warm. Mm -hmm. Number six, move together. If you were to watch a, um, a marching band, right, at halftime at a show, and one person wasn't really moving very well, mm -hmm. it would stand out. Mm -hmm. But if you were to watch a mosh pit at a concert, it's really hard to figure out the person that's not moving well because right. it's just constant movement. Yep. If everyone moves well, it's easier for the coach. So it's like together, everyone squat and hold the squat. Now I can really quickly learn right down the line, not literally with my eyes, run down the line and see who's on their toes. Yep. Good, and stand and squat and hold and check out knees tracking and stand. It helps you as a coach. The cool thing is it helps the members as well because good movement is consistent. Mm. I mean, sorry, is contagious. Yeah, it's gonna, it yeah. builds, it, you're gonna catch on, you're gonna see the person in front of you and what they're doing and try to do exactly what they're doing. There is a reason that martial arts schools since the beginning of martial arts have always moved in syn syn Synchron synchronicity. That's what, that's yeah. what I was gonna say, <laughs> yes. And um, they good, it helps when they move together. Like one of the coolest things that we Google Kung Fu from space, like do it, Google okay. Kung Fu from space and watch these thousands of Kung Fu practitioners moving in exact unison yeah. with each other. Yeah. There's a reason that happens is because they all will move together. It's a more enjoyable experience for everyone when everyone moves together as opposed to, okay, Let's do um, some thrusters. Okay, now let's everyone do some box jumps. Now, I'm not saying is artificially make it together. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying like yeah. jump rope. Right. And we're, okay, now everyone, like up right. and, and down. And up, and up, exactly. Right. Up yeah. and down and up and down. <laughs> what I'm saying is, okay, 10 seconds of jump rope. Yeah. Ready, set, three, yeah. two, one, go. 10, eight, six. Four, three, Got two, it. one, and time. Good. Okay. Now everyone push up position and down and up. Good. Down mm -hmm. and up. Okay. Back up. And everyone, let's jump on a pull up bar and we're going to do 10 scap retractions on you. Ready? Three, two, one, jump. So that's the type yeah. of move together, not yeah. literally like drill sergeant teeth. Yeah. Yeah. On, on the, the kind of the user end of that, what's nice about it is it, it subconsciously, reminds you that you're part of a group bigger than just yourself, right? And I think that that's one of the reasons why class works, why CrossFit in a gym works, right? It, it reminds you that you're doing this difficult thing with a bunch of people, right? And if you just, if everything is done on your own time and you lose that and it's not yeah. the end of the world, but it adds quite a bit of value when you can like, oh, we're all doing this together. We're all in this together, yeah. right? That's why Love I, that. Um, number seven, consistency is king. Okay, so if you always run your class with a similar, I'm not saying exact, but a similar fashion that people can kind of understand the flow of it, it brings a level of consistency, obviously, yep. which breeds confidence. Yeah. And when that happens, people know what's coming up next, which allows them to pay attention more. Now, it might seem like yeah. a really big leap, but let's say... Um, some days I allow people to take a bathroom break before we start the workout. But 80% of the time, I don't. Yep. 
what if I'm in that class, what I'm going to be thinking is like, dude, I'm going to use the restroom before this class starts. I'm going to go do that now. Right. Like, cause I don't know if I'm going to get it later on. Yep. Or you're constantly in the back of your mind thinking, is this the right time? Should I do it? Yeah, now? exactly. I so now? now I'm listening, but yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about, well, should I go to the bathroom yeah, now or not? Exactly. Am I going to get the time to do this or not? Yeah. Instead of just like listening to the coach. Yeah. If every single day before I start the workout, I say, we're going to take three minutes for bathroom water or questions. Tape, tinkle, and talk, right? <laughs> if we're going to do that every single day, all of a sudden there's a consistency where I know halfway through the class, before the workout starts, I'm going to get the chance to use the restroom. Yeah. That's just one of a gazillion examples right. of how breeding consistency in this. But another one would be like the barbell warm-up. Every single time we do a workout with a barbell, we do the same barbell warm-up, consisting of five very fundamental movements. Now what happens is people get to know that really good and they just know what's coming up and they know what's next and they feel really comfortable and they allow themselves to kind of sit in that moment as opposed to like, oh, what's next? Am I being critiqued? Like they know like the level of coaching and awareness. They know it's just like there's a reason that kids love to watch the same movies over and over and over again Mm -hmm. because they know what to expect and it brings confidence to them. They feel like they have ownership over it. That's what happens if you have consistency in your class. Number eight, coach the average. Okay, what we mean by this is... um, what the, the the temptation for a lot of coaches is um, you have a class of 20 people. 10 are average. Then you have um, five people that are kind of like studs. And then you have three that are beginners and you have two that have never done cross before. Mm-hmm. And the temptation is I got to go at the speed of those two brand new beginners. Mm-hmm. And if you do that, if you go at the speed, the teaching and the flow and of those people, you're basically losing the attention of the other 18. Instead, what you want to do, if you run a really good class, you want to coach to the average. Now, it's obvious now that I said that. If you run a really good class, it should be appropriate for the beginner athlete, slow enough that the beginner athlete can, can follow along, but also quick enough and nuanced enough that the CrossFit Games competitor could feel like this class is appropriate for me. Yep. That's the level of a very skilled coach. Not, okay, we're going to be doing air squats. So everyone squat down and you have to walk over to that athlete and spend four minutes manually manipulating them into a below parallel position. That's not the appropriate way to coach a class. Yes, it is for that athlete. And yes, you're bringing up the lowest, you know, uh, the, the lowest um, rung on the ladder. Yep. But that's not the goal. The goal is to get everyone there to feel like this is a great class for them. Do you literally think about in class, okay, who's my average today? And let me make sure in the back of my mind that that we're moving at the right speed for them. Or is it something that's more of a an instinct at this yeah, point? Yeah, for me, it's, it's definitely more of an instinct yeah. type thing. And particularly, this is one of the nice reasons that if you always coach the same class, yeah. you're coaching to the, it's the class, right? And we have people that have won, literally won the CrossFit Games in my 830 class. Mm-hmm. And we have people that are, this is their first week. And together, like when that person's in the class, whether it's a new person, they're going to pull it down a little bit. I'm going to have to slow it down a hair, but I don't bring it down eight, nine, 10 notches. Yep. And if that games athlete is in there, I might bring it up a hair. But if they're both in the class, like it's the normal class. Mm-hmm. Number nine, perform. Okay, so your classes are a performance. The, the, the mantra, the saying is like educate entertain and inspire. Now, that's what we should be doing as, as coaches. Yep. When, with our classes, the way you can um, entertain is the, looking at your class as a performance. And the, the, the kind of key thing there is your tonality and like how big you go and the spacing you put between your words. But even more so like the most tangible and tactful, tactile, like somebody could actually like mechanistic, like I could go back and do this, is the music. Mm. I'm not saying like, Rage Against the Machine versus Katy Perry. Yep. I'm saying- I'd give um, Katy Perry. I would too, actually. <laughs> Guilty pleasure for me, yeah. for sure. Um, um, what I'm saying is the way you use the music in terms of volume. Yeah. When is it loud? When is it quiet? Like we're, we talked about Tabata. Yep. We did Tabata workout in the gym today. Yep. During the rest period, imagine if you like, first off, imagine one experience of Tabata where the coach doesn't give any time and the music just stays up the same. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you're maybe you're listening for the beep of the clock or maybe you have to like look at the clock the whole time. That's really a suboptimal experience yeah. as opposed to imagine the coach is going 
three, two, one, go. And when they say go, the music volume goes from four to 10. Mm -hmm. And for 20 seconds, it's blaring. And the coach is either giving, at worst case, cheerleading, not worst case, but they're giving cheerleading yep. or they're giving um, feedback or they're giving encouragement or they're, but for 20 seconds, it's let's go, Mark, get your knees out. Let's go, John, faster with the, faster with the elbows. Let's go, Billy. Come on. Like one more, one more, like keep the bar up a three, two, one time. And the music comes back down to level four <sighs> and you hear like people's breath and like, mm -hmm. <sighs> and it goes three, two, one. And the music comes back up to 10. It's like, let's go, go, go. It's like, now we're starting to create yeah. this feeling behind this thing, right? Yep. And they're creating a race and they're creating a performance. And this is not just monotone mm -hmm. across the board of somebody that's reading you a story and it's Winnie the Pooh, like that never <laughs> changes their yep. tone. Out. Like, yep. it's in charge. You create the heat. Yeah. You got to bring it. Yeah, I love that note about the music. I mean, if you think about filmmaking or movies or TV, like, that's an element of the of the entertainment is how they how effectively can they use music to to elevate your emotions to to surprise you whatever it is. Quentin Tarantino says that the music is the hardest part of making a movie. Yeah, because think because it's so important. Yeah, right. Like writing a script, you can kind of sit down and like yep. this is what they're gonna say and yep. this, but the music actually is what really brings the Super feeling. Powerful. It's so powerful. Yeah. Like. Watch Bat, watch Batman or Star Wars, and there's no Hans Zimmer. Yeah, like, like, right. like it's just like just no yeah. noise, no music. Yeah. It, um, just, um, just for folks who are maybe curious, how are you, how do you manipulate the music while you're coaching? Like, I, yeah. I, I, I know, but like, you're not at the radio, like spinning a dial right. and spinning. So we a have dial. a remote control, but yep. we coach hands free. Yep. So we can't hold the remote control. So what we do is we put it in our pocket mm -hmm. and we control it from outside of our pocket. So it looks like oh, interesting. our hands so are by hands our side. In the pocket. Your hands never go in your pocket. Hands free coaching. You're not holding a dowel. You're not holding a water bottle. You're not holding your phone. You're not holding a remote. So what we do is you put it in your pocket and you can feel the yep. buttons from outside your pocket. Yep. So your hands are free. They're yep. outside your pockets. But when you need to, you just put them on there and you control the volume up and down. Very cool. Okay. Last one I've got is best hour. So this is like an uh, this is a like massive underlying principle, right? But if you always have this kind of at the the forefront of your mind, like the the objective here in this class. Yeah, I know you want to get them better at pull-ups. Yeah, I know you want to lower their body fat. Yeah, I know you want to get them fat, run faster miles. But really what the goal is is give them the best hour of their day. That can dictate a lot of the decisions you make along the way. Like you're kind of like, ah, that person could use some help, but I've already given them tons of coaching today. If you don't have a kind of like principle to fall back on, you're just going to default to like they need more coaching. They need mm -hmm. more coaching. They don't. But if you're like, this is about the best hour of their day. You can kind of say like, have I given them enough today? Like yeah. in terms of like, they, maybe they just want to like, they're ready to just kind of throw yeah. down. And yeah. maybe like, they'll come back tomorrow. I'll be able yeah. to work with them tomorrow. Or have they laughed? Yeah, exactly. Right? Or yeah. the same thing, thing, like I'm up there coaching and I got to deliver all the knowledge I have <laughs> right. on the kettlebell swing. So I'm gonna tell them everything I know about the kettlebell swing. As opposed to like, nope, this is just about the best hour of the day. Yep. We're gonna do fight gone bad. Is it about really about them becoming better at the wall ball? Or is this just about like, dude, yep. let's see what we got today and let's bring the freaking heat, mm -hmm. like make it the best hour of their day. So we started this talking about this notion of it being a scorecard and, and maybe measuring yourself against each one of these. How would you as an affiliate, as an affiliate owner, how would you implement these ideas in a way that... Um, everything gets better, but that the coach also gets better. Would you, um, you know, we've talked a lot about giving feedback at the end of every class. Would you focus on, would you, you know, would you watch it and then focus on like, okay, where's the lowest, um, you know, where would I score the lowest? And let me talk to them about that. Or like, how, how would you take these ideas and actually make them real? So, um, or how do you? Yeah. So, um, two different aspects. What you could do is like, okay, which are the most meaningful of these? Mm -hmm. To me, it's the best hour, mm -hmm. like right away. Like if there's one, that's why I put it last. Yeah. If there's one, it's the best hour. Like that over, over that supersedes all others, yep. right? So are you making this the best hour of their day? Then from there, you figure out where the other ones are. You kind of rank them and then you pay most attention to the ones that have the most meaning. Or what you do is there's one through 10. Well, you're as fit or capable as your weakest link, right? You are as good at this class structure standpoint as your weakest link. So if you um, kill it in all these categories, 
but you there's no room set up whatsoever every single time they're like the athletes don't know where their space is on like let's try to double down on that mm -hmm. and maybe you're a six or a seven everything but you're a two in that mm -hmm. well you moving up to an eight in one of those things is not gonna be as in all of those might not be as meaningful as you go bring in that from a two up to a six. Mm -hmm. So you work on the weakest link. But really the idea is not so much how you put this in practice. We call it a scorecard. It's kind of nice because it's a visual representation yeah. of like a, 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 a zero is your terrible and a yep. 10 is your world class. And you have 10 of these categories and 10. So give yourself a one to 10 in each of these things. Yep. It's more of a hypothetical, a thought experiment of, of these categories. Where do I rank myself in these? Um, you know, in terms of setup, I'm a nine. I spend tons of time with that. But in terms of clock management, I'd never thought about that. So mm -hmm. I'm a one or a two. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of that like bring awareness to these different components that um, are that are um, that move the needle in terms of the way you organize and structure a class. Again, not coaching, mm -hmm. coaching something very different. This is the way you structure and organize a class. And how much of this, um, how much of this can be systematized? Such that um, the you have processes processes in place for every one of your coaches to learn and implement, and how much of these are maybe an individual coach by coach basis, where you can, or, or as the coach or as the as the owner, you can work on you know okay your room setup isn't very good, or is that no this is how we set the room up right because yeah. that's what we talked about is that's Love a it. that's a gym wide rule really versus a you know I'm trying to look at another one. Um, um, coach more and talk less. That feels a little bit more of a personal or individual, or at least there's room there to tweak individuals. Yep. Um, I would say that uh, just clarifying the, the expectations behind each of these, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say like you wanted to like really take the next step with this. You're an affiliate owner, you're a head coach, you really want to use this to help develop your staff. Write down each of these 10 and write down one or two or three bullet points for each of these things that really exemplifies what you mean by these things. Mm -hmm. The goal of a leader is to create culture, a vision, and a standards of excellence, yep. right? So uh, with the SOPs, if you want to call it, standards yep. of procedures even. Um, so what you're going to try to do here is make it really clear what these things are. What are the standards for your class structure management? Whatever we want to call this yep. thing, right? Yep. This is what it looks like, guys. This is exactly what it looks like. Now, when we talk about this, you have a reference point for what it is that we are either excelling at or we're falling short of. And if you have those reference points and they're all shared, it's really tough for you to go like, you're not running a class really the way we want to. And the mm -hmm. coach like, really? Why? You're like, I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's not how I do it. Yeah. Like, yeah. or you walk into affiliate now and you're like, wow, they just don't do it the way that they did it at my affiliate. I can't yep. put my finger on why. I'm going to guess it has one of the to do with one of these 10 things. Yeah. Now, there's a whole another thing that's equally or more important, which is coaching. Right. I just want to keep reiterating that. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you, if you don't coach at all, if you don't have the presence and attitude, if you don't have the ability to like um, hold a group, if you don't have the ability to teach and um, that's a that's a totally different thing. Yeah. But when people that don't know anything about the sport, I could walk into a, um, a badminton practice. I know nothing about badminton, mm -hmm. but using these i could kind of be like okay this is they're not doing these things well yeah. like uninitiated you could still see the 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 um the spectrum of right. good to bad right got it all right my friend thank you very much cool we thanks Patrick. everybody next week cheers you can get every episode of chasing excellence wherever you listen to your podcasts or on youtube until next time thank you for listening